afternoon to all of our summer preview students and parents who are joining us from all over to learn about the Arch at Rensselaer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. My name is Jade Felder. I am the Director of the Arch and Student Transitions here at RPI. I am joined by my colleague and director of the Center for Career and Professional Development, Mr. Philip Bruce. We also have a very, very special guest joining us, Frank Peters, who is our student speaker, and you will hear more about that portion later in the presentation. So what I would like to do is to get us started with an overview of the arch at Rensselaer. I know many of you have the opportunity to uh, learn about internships. You may understand the value, but after this presentation, my hope is that you'll have an even more robust understanding of what Arch at Rensselaer is like for all of our matriculating students into RPI. So to get us started, I'm going to start with the Arch at Rensselaer what exactly is it? The Arch at Rensselaer was designed to provide our students within the four traditional years of matriculation the opportunity to experience a semester away in a very, very meaningful experience. So you see we have students experience a robust summer experience on campus after their sophomore year. This is then followed by a world away experience. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like for each student. And then what does it do? It prepares all of our students to meet the multifaceted challenges of the 21st century. So in our institute's design of the arch requirement for our students, here is the intentionality behind what we are hoping and what we are seeing in terms of our data and reports that our students are gaining as a result of completing their arch requirements you will see an acceleration of immersion in both the academic and professional worlds. And when we say acceleration, we mean that we are exposing our students to all of the disciplines and allowing them to have the opportunity to go into the factories and go into the field, go into the different places that help to underscore what they're learning in the classroom and the pedagogies that is being provided. So we provide the students that well-rounded experiential learning uh, opportunity. Next, you'll see we have structured academic advising, career counseling, and leadership development. In this area, students will have a very important preparatory year, which I'll talk a little bit more about next, and that includes academic advising. It includes career counseling, and it includes leadership development. These three foundational pillars are the cornerstone of what every Rensselaer student should be able to access, uh, understand, and hone as their own once they leave Rensselaer. The third thing is a unique academic and co-curricular summer experience. During the summer term, students will be on campus, and this is where they are provided a very in-depth uh, co-curricular um, experience to where students can network with their cohort, students can build relationships with their faculty. And the unique thing is that these students are the only cohort on campus in the summer. So it is a much more intimate experience. And I'll share it with you a little bit more about that in the presentation. We have the reclustering of the junior year for the cohort all across all disciplines. So the reclustering is really what we look to do after a student has spent their first two years at Rensselaer. So as a freshman student, when you enter, you'll be doing what we call following formulas, getting comfortable with the campus, understanding different parameters, understanding curriculum, uh, understanding course load, uh, understanding the expectation as far as a Rensselaer student. The sophomore year is then followed by a little bit more of that, but we pick it up uh, at the discipline level and a lot of students are choosing majors at this time. So from that place, once the student gets into the arts summer term and then goes out on their semester away, this provides students the opportunity to recluster, to have a uh, 
redesign of who they met at the beginning of their Rensselaer experience and now meeting them again midterm to see where the networks and the partnerships can continue to blossom. So we have more focused and meaningful engagement with faculty. The meaningful engagement with faculty is really for students to begin to know their faculty inside the classroom and outside of the classroom. We know in the freshman and sophomore year, uh, we sit, tend to see uh, more foundational courses, uh, you know, such as foundations of computer science, or uh, you see something as very similar as chemistry one or physics one, where a lot of students have to take those uh, pivotal classes. But as you get more into uh, your disciplinary courses, we hope that the faculty and the students are able to connect in a more intimate way inside the classroom and outside of the classroom. The last thing is an opportunity for students to engage in self-discovery. I cannot tell you all how important it is for students at Rensselaer to engage in self-discovery in every aspect of from their major to holistic development, uh, college student development, because our goal is to have this lead to increased intellectual agility, multicultural sophistication, and a global perspective. And those three things are uh, the foundational class outcomes that our president and leadership have designed for all students at Rensselaer. So as we talk a little bit about what does the arch look like? What does a general student's matriculation look like from the time they start at the Institute until the time they finish at the Institute? The most important thing I'd like to note first is that most students who attend Rensselaer uh, will be matriculating in a four year plan. We do have architecture students who will be uh, matriculating in a five year plan. And so for our architecture students specifically who, be, who are on our call or thinking of going into that major, you would actually be participating in your arch summer term after your third year of study. So to break it down a little bit further, each cohort that enters Rensselaer, you are grouped together um, as that cohort and you're uh, followed all the way through to the end of your career. So basically in the freshman year, you have a fall on campus requirement, spring on campus requirement, and you have a summer that is uh, free. But we also have the opportunity for students who come into the Institute with uh, um, a, a number of AP credits, uh, students who are accelerated. Uh, we have the opportunity for them to complete their arch requirement summer um, in the first First summer on campus instead of the second summer. So that's really the freshman year. And that is where you're getting a lot of the foundational knowledge from first year experience uh, with your first year dean to learning more about uh, who's in your classes, uh, what the, the technology and equipment is like, what are the labs like. This is a very, very exciting time for the students who uh, attend Rensselaer. So with the eight semesters of instruction and the four years to graduation, you will have eight semesters of financial aid for all those students who are eligible. And so this is a very, very important factor we like to share with our families because the eight semesters of financial aid do include your ARCH summer term. So after the freshman year is completed, we then move into the sophomore year. The sophomore year is highlighted in red because we want you to understand uh, the importance of the sophomore year at Rensselaer. This is a very, very important preparation year for all of our students. And when I speak of preparation, we do a lot of preparation in terms of uh, getting you prepared for the ARCH summer term and semester away. And this includes the ARCH, at, uh, the ARCH and Exploration Planning course that our CCPD will talk a little bit more about later. We also do semester away selection in the sophomore year. We also have students uh, selecting what their summer term courses will be during the spring of their sophomore year. And we also have what's called Arch Discovery Day, which is something that every single sophomore student at Rensselaer attends. It is an annual event where students are able to explore all the different uh, faceted areas of what the Arch will provide them. And so we work really, really hard to make sure the sophomore year is uh, action packed um, and also very rigorous outside of the classroom so that students can begin preparing for that important summer term. Now you'll notice 
Arch summer term is in the sophomore year as well because at the very conclusion of the sophomore year, students will stay on campus in our residential uh, halls to attend their Arch summer term. During this time, students will be taking full course loads of 12 credits or more on campus in addition to um, the co-curricular offerings that I will speak more about a little later. Then in the junior year, you have semester away. And so you see we have two asterisks for the semester away because two students can be away in the fall term or students can choose to be away in the spring term. Whichever term students choose, they will be able to design their matriculation around what summer term they'll, the summer term they'll be here and which semester they'll be on campus and which semester they'll be away. So after the students have an amazing time uh, in their semester away experience, they are then seniors once they return. And these students then are able to reflect on that experience. Um, they do a lot of assessment during that time, a lot of reflection exercises during that time. And this is where our students are gearing up for fall, spring, and graduation. So a lot of those experiences that students have secured for their arch uh, semester away, some of those are conversions to where sometimes students are offered full-time positions. Some students will go into uh, co-terminal degrees at the Institute to where they'll be going into a master's program. And others may go into uh, different parameters that uh, they are focused on for their individual career. So this is just to give you a general snapshot of what that looks like in the four years of how a student will matriculate at Rensselaer with their arch requirement in place. Now, the next big thing I want to make sure that students and parents are aware of is the financial planning piece. We do tend to have a lot of questions regarding financial planning and what that looks like for each student, uh, whether they're domestic or international, how our uh, financial aid office is supporting our domestic students, how we are providing uh, different flexibilities uh, for our students to make sure that they are able to uh, meet those requirements of the Institute. So the first thing I want to point out is that federal New York State and RPI aid is available at the same level during the summer session if you are enrolled full time. So what that means is students who are enrolled full time, meaning 12 credit hours or more, they are able to take advantage of their entire financial aid package as they normally would during their uh, time at Rensselaer. And that means in the fall semester, in the spring semester, this is when students are able to take advantage of those opportunities for financing. Now, the summer term counts as one of those eight semesters of aid. And that means that students are uh, eligible for 10 semesters if you're architecture students. The third thing to note is at the beginning of the academic year, this is when students are beginning to apply for those uh, loans, grants, anything that students are going to need. So we also have a definitive deadline for students to follow. Filing your FAFSA by December 31st, this allows students the earliest review of financial aid applications. And you don't have to worry because the Arch at Rensselaer, Student Transitions, the office that um, I oversee, we make sure that communication is sent out to students uh, quarterly, monthly, and we make sure that parents and students alike are aware of what those financial parameters look like um, as you're getting closer to your Arch summer term. So that's just to give you a little bit about the finance piece. Um, as students come to campus and as students get closer to their ARCH summer term, we have sessions during family weekend about the ARCH. We have sessions uh, at ARCH Discovery Day about financing. So we have multiple opportunities for parents and students to engage with us about their financial needs. So let's jump into something a little bit more exciting and let's talk about what the summer here experience is all about. So as we talk about the summer here experience, we are really referring to the ARCH summer term on campus. And so what I like to always start with is providing you the general framework that the Institute has designed in the Division of Student Life to provide students a very robust um, and support and uh, standard of care for all of our students who attend Rensselaer. 
So clustered learning advocacy and support for students is the acronym that defines how we guide our practices at Rensselaer. And in this clustered model, we have cohort support and we have residential clustering support. So in the cohort support, each student that attends Rensselaer will be matched with a undergraduate class dean. And that dean will follow you all the way through in your freshman year, and that is the dean of the first year experience. From there, you will then be changed over to an upper class dean when you become a sophomore. So that upper class dean will then follow you all the way until you um, graduate from Rensselaer. And so that is the, the point of contact for all students and all parents who may need um, additional assistance, uh, holistic development, anything from academic um, counseling, anything from the perspective of the, ex the student's experience at Rensselaer. That cohort support is provided from the beginning all the way to the end. I think the tagline that very much suits this uh, class dean is they're with you from um, the beginning all the way to graduation. And the second piece is the residential clustering. The, this cluster model is that when students come to campus, we typically try to group students in the cluster of their class year. So when you come on campus as freshmen, we will have freshmen uh, clustering for you. And then that matriculates into sophomore clustering because you have a two year and a half requirement of living on campus as a student at Rensselaer, okay? And so with that, cohort support and residential clustering, that is our programming model. So you'll notice that we have residential deans, live-in deans who are on campus with our students, assistant deans. Of course, some of you may be familiar with the term resident assistant uh, or resident directors. Those are our RAs and RDs who support our students from the residential halls. And so we really try to create a home life experience for our students in these two important aspects. And I know one important thing for parents to note is your undergraduate class dean is a very important contact to keep while your student is matriculating at Rensselaer. So with this learning and advocacy, that is where our programming comes in, that is where our learning opportunities come in, and that is where the assessment comes in. And this is what students are provided during the ARCH summer term. And so the next thing to note is in regard to the summer semester services, in the summer semester services, these are the uh, foundational services that students are provided. So you have RPI counseling, you have the Center for Career and Professional Development, you have public safety, uh, ALAC, which is an acronym that stands for uh, Advising Learning and Assistance Center. We have the Rensselaer Union, the Mueller Center for Wellness and uh, Physical Activity. We have our dining hall and meal plans, and we have our undergraduate class deans. So this is the uh, foundational piece of what the summer semester services look like. But one important thing I do want to know is that the summer semester services that are provided are exactly comparable to the fall and spring. Everything that's available in the fall, everything that's available in the spring is available for our students in the summer term. And so the last thing I want to provide you as far as the summer semester experience is a little bit of a sample of what a student can expect their schedule to look like in their ARCH summer term. So you see we have uh, a common lunch period, and this is something that is very unique to the summer term. In the fall and spring, uh, student schedules are all over, of course, <laughs> but we were very intentional in planning the common lunch period, which is marked at the very beginning of the year of the summer term with the ARCH kickoff event that is campus-wide, and we bring everyone on campus together who's there in the summer term for an awesome time of networking and fellowship. And students can uh, utilize this hour time to really reconnect with their friends every single day of the summer term. You'll notice we have classes beginning at 8 a.m. and uh, going until 4.30 p.m., so a typical class day. But you'll notice that we also have field trips to companies, You'll notice that Wednesdays, there are no classes that are being held, um, except for a few minor labs that may take place in terms of your uh, major at the Institute. But Wednesdays is a day for students to have a reprieve, to rest, 
to uh, catch up on work, to uh, take that leisure time as they need to. We also have the lab periods you'll see on Mondays and Thursdays. But depending on what your specific schedule is, uh, this is one of, for, of course, our engineering students. Uh, you'll see we have TF2, which is thermals and fluids. Of course, we have thermals and fluids one and thermals and fluids two. Elements of mechanical design. A lot of our students are taking intro to engineering design. Um, and so we want to provide you a little bit of a sample of what your classes could look like in the our summer term. And so that is a little bit of a glimpse of what students can expect during the summer term the different field trips and labs to companies uh, that we connect with in the capital region, uh, in the nearing states to bring students a robust opportunity to go into factories. We do this every single summer. Our faculty also offer students pop-up courses. We have uh, fireside chats, every opportunity that we can to get our students out and about and connecting is what we try to offer them. Now, the next important piece of this presentation is going to be planning for the, the semester away. And I'm pretty sure that you all are going to be excited to learn all the awesome things <laughs> that you can do for your semester away. So at this time, I'm going to be turning it over to my colleague, Dr. Uh, Mr. Philip Bruce, the Director of the Career and Professional Development Center, who's going to talk a little bit more about what the planning for semester away entails. Uh, okay, good afternoon and good morning and, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I know we were having a little bit of audio uh, technical issues there on um, at the, towards the end of, of what Jade was uh, sharing with you guys. So uh, let me jump on here and troll these slides. So my name is Philip Bruce. I am the director of the Center for Career and Professional Development. Uh, I also have a special guest with me today. Um, his name is Frank Peters. He's one of our amazing students and who is experiencing his away semester uh, or has experienced it and is, is doing some great work as a, as a student intern with Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. So um, we'll let Frank share a little bit more about his story uh, towards the end here and also help you with any questions. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what your semester away might look like so jade's kind of described to you what your semester on campus will look like for the arch um, and everyone will do either an away semester in either the fall or the spring semester of their junior year typically uh we we get a lot of students who want to do internships and co-ops uh civic engagement and research we also have students though who do study abroad uh and self-design and study at another institution. So what we've really tried to do is create an environment where you decide how you want to spend your semester away. No matter what, we're all going to be doing an ILE and we have different offices that help you with those uh, different opportunities. So my office is obviously responsible directly for internships, co-ops and civic engagement. Uh, we also handle some research opportunities uh if they're off campus and they're paid uh, the office of undergraduate education handles all of the other on-campus research opportunities that are done remotely as well as the study at another institution and the self-design which i'll talk a little bit more about that self-design in a moment uh, study abroad and the international experience so a lot of students either if they're international students uh by you know by identification, then they can do an internship or co-op in their home country. Uh, they could do uh, a variety of different civic engagement experiences in their home country. But we also have students who would like to travel for their semester away. So the Office of International Programs uh, helps set all of those up for you. As far as the ILEs go, they're all considered independent learning experiences. And, and I think that's that's important because you really are in control of how you spend your semester away. 
Now, if you decide you want to do an internship or co-op or civic engagement, those areas that I mentioned fall under my office's responsibilities. These are the folks that will help and the system we have set up to help you achieve securing one of those. So our employer relations team does exactly what it sounds like. They focus entirely on employers and developing out relationships that are sustainable for students at RPI. That means that the work that Frank is, is going to talk to you about that he does at Regeneron helps set the stage for the next round of interns and co-ops that come in because of the great work he does. Uh, you're, you're basically getting a leg up because of the program and the people that have come before you. Employer relations helps to maintain all of those relationships. They also provide all of the job postings and experiences uh, that, that we've created for you to choose from. Now, the career development team focuses entirely on students. So these people don't work with employers. What they do is they prepare you for the opportunities that the employer relations team develops. This is a great model because it follows all of the things that Jade was talking about with the class clustering uh, and our attention to the individual student experience, recognizing that all of you are capable of doing amazing things the career development team helps you get to the point where you can realize those things. Uh, no student that I know of has ever walked into college and then automatically been given an internship in co-op and then automatically knows how to do that again in the future when they graduate. So this is all part of a process we all have to go through, but we've got it structured to where we can help you every step of the way. So when you have identified the career you want to go into, what are the things, what are the competencies we need to demonstrate and equip you with in order to be able to successfully get one of those positions? I think it's uh, also great that we have an experiential learning team. So these are the folks that once you secure that opportunity, they enroll you in an LMS course, uh, which is a virtual course that you take during your internship in co-op or you know, doing your ILE. Uh, experience or, or any of the other semester aways, you'll be in an LMS course. That's important because if you decide to do a co-op, which would span two semesters, being enrolled in that course allows you to stay uh, active and current as a student, which means your student loans don't come due, you know, you're, you don't have to tap into any grace period. Uh, but the experiential learning team also works with international students to make sure that their visa requirements are met uh, and that, you know, the experience is, is worthwhile for you. We get a lot of good feedback from students during their internships and co-ops on how the company culture is and, and how, you know, they affected change in, in the industries that they've gone into. So those are the three teams that we have that, that kind of help you prepare for and identify semester away opportunities. The other piece that the career development team does that I think is really important is during that sophomore year. So if you remember on the slide that Jade showed you with the four years, the sophomore year was highlighted in red. And that's because that's a very formative year for you all. It's going to be very important that you get a structured career development experience your sophomore year so you can take advantage of internships and co-ops and whatever you want to do in the semester away. So we created this course. Um, it's, a, it's called the Arch Exploration and Planning course. It is all delivered uh, from staff in the CCPD and with the partnership that we have with our Institute for Advancement. Um, so we get alumni to, to help contribute to the course. So you'll get an opportunity to hear from, meet uh, virtually, of course, uh, alumni who are in different industries that you're interested in. All of these courses are divided by college. So, you know, if you're an engineering student, we're going to make sure you're connected to engineering alumni from RPI who can give you a leg up, who can help you understand these are the things you need to do to have a successful application, interview, and then opportunity. The course is got curriculum that includes the ILE module. So if you decide what I really want to do doesn't fit into nicely into one of these buckets, you know, I want to develop an app that helps address uh, food shortages from hunger banks. Um, there are a lot of things that our students do that we would consider an individual learning experience. So we help you prepare for that. We help you outline 
you know, what are the career competencies you want to learn from this? Uh, how can you, you know, have a before and after resume critique experience that really helps you enhance what you did on your semester away for future employment? And finally, you know, you, you're going to be under a lot of academic uh, rigor uh, here at RPI. You know, students who come to RPI do so because they want to be challenged academically. We're not trying to add another grade to you on that. So this course is an SREU because you're, you're really going to get out of it what you put into it. We just want to make sure you understand that we're trying to create the conditions for you to be successful. So what is some advice we might have? Well, I'm going to turn this over to Frank in just a second so he can talk to you a little bit about what his advice is. But from an educator standpoint, I really think it's important that you take this experience seriously. These are life skills that you're going to learn. It's not just skills on how to make it through that semester. These are things that are going to be directly related to what you want to do as a human on this planet. And so as a result, it's your personal journey. Uh, you, Like I said earlier, you'll get as much out of it as you put into it. You should also consider attending career-related events early, and I mean like now. Um, it doesn't hurt anyone to start to attend virtual career fairs, even though you're not necessarily seeking a position right now, but to just understand what that environment looks like. What happens if you have technical issues? Um, there's a lot of examples I can give you of really bright students, really Students who, had they prepared a little bit more, would have been much more successful in their experience hunting. So, you know, do things right now that can help you. If you have a LinkedIn account, start networking with professionals in the industries you want to go into. Um, reach out, ask them for advice. What would their 18-year-old self do? Uh, there's a lot of things that you could be doing right now to, to start to take advantage of the things you're going to have available to you when you become a freshman at RPI. You know, some people want to know where are our students? What are they doing on these away semester experiences? And here are just a few examples. Um, you know, I, I had to do a report the other day, like yesterday, uh, for Silicon Valley. We have eight students right now in Silicon Valley, and they're at Intel, Facebook, Apple, IonPath, Applied Materials, and BAE Systems, uh, and Boeing. So that's just one small group in one small geographic location. So when you come to RPI, you will have access to all of those types of organizations. And you will have a very good chance at getting those types of opportunities. But I'd also like to make it clear that if you would like to do things other than work for a major world conglomerate, we, we will absolutely help you get there and help you do that. Now, Regeneron is not cited on here as one of these companies, but Regeneron Pharmaceuticals is doing some amazing work right now in terms of the COVID-19 response. And we're really pleased to have Frank Peters joining us today to talk a little bit about that experience that he's uh, engaged in right now. And uh, Frank, if, you, if you'd like, I'll let you take it over and, and just share a little bit about what you're doing and what students could expect. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you for the, the very kind words. <laughs> so my name is Frank Peters. I'm currently a rising senior studying biomedical engineering at RPI. And right now I'm doing my away semester at Regeneron in Terrytown. And I was looking for this co-op position around last fall, and I was in the summer arch last summer. And so during this process, there was really kind of no limit to the number of resources that were available. Career source was my main source, and there was a ton of people there to help me with it. But there was tons of help I got from upperclassmen who have experienced this kind of stuff before, kind of walking me through what they thought stuff like that and as well as professors professors have a ton of advice on places that they've worked before colleagues that they have uh, i was even able to just get in contact with the dean of the engineering department and kind of talk about my resume and some of the experiences that he's had so it's been really interesting at, at um regeneron specifically i've been super lucky to kind of this time frame to get to see all the cool stuff that's going on in regards to their covid response Right now, I work in the technology transfer and logistics portion of their process development branch. And basically what that's responsible for is once Regeneron creates the antibodies that they're using to treat diseases like Ebola and coronavirus, it's 
my department's job to make sure that those proteins and antibodies get where they're needing to go. So in a co-op, you're usually granted a little more responsibility than an average intern. And I've actually been able to provide a significant amount of help in the technology transfers group group's efforts in trying to get these samples out to contributing research organizations. So it's been super cool. And without having the opportunity, the arch to take off this semester and do this opportunity, I probably wouldn't have been able to do something as intense and as rigorous as this co-op I've been doing at Regeneron. And on top of it, I thought the summer semester was a lot of fun. Being on campus with all my friends, taking classes with smaller groups that were really focusing on what I wanted to do in the future. It was so much fun and I think it was a really valuable learning experience. One of my, I guess my favorite stories about the Arch was an ice cream eating competition they had in the union. So normally the union is packed with students, but over the summer it was kind of lighter. So the Ben and Jerry's in the union was able to hold an ice cream eating competition where they had these huge, like two gallon buckets that they just fill with ice cream. You're supposed to bring a team in. So I had three of my friends come in. We came in and we found out the teams were supposed to be of six. We're a team of four. Sadly, we only came in second place, but it was only by like 30 seconds. But I keep that bucket to this day. And I swear to come back with a vengeance. Yes, that is great, Frank. Thank you. Um, you know, I I think Frank is a great example of a student who put the work in ahead of time, leveraged the resources that were available to him, and now is reaping the benefits of that. And I have no doubt he's going to be incredibly employable uh, in the next year when he graduates, which, of course, is what we're trying to do here. Uh, so I'm excited to let you know that we're always available to work with you and to help you. Um, even as an alumni, you retain all access to all of our services. So, you know, we're, we're, we're standing behind the promise that if you come to RPI, we will give you as much assistance as possible uh, to make sure what you want to do is realized. So this is how you can contact us. Um, I think even in a virtual environment, where all of our services have been moved completely online. You will find us to be just as excited to help you in environments like this as we would be if we could see you in person. So uh, with that, I'm gonna kind of turn it back over to Jade and I think she may be able to help us, you know, DJ some of these questions <laughs> you guys have. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that, uh, everyone. I know I had some technical difficulty toward the end. This whole internet connection thing is difficult, <laughs> but, um, I wanted to jump in and, and get a few of those questions answered for you all, um, the ones that I'm seeing here on my side. And the first was, uh, I know Ethan had a question, how large are the cohorts? So Ethan, um, the cohorts that come into Rensselaer um, definitely are, uh, I would say 1500 students plus. So um, as you continue to go on, of course, you have the uh, different, you know, summer melt, you have sophomore slump, you have different things that affect the overall cohort. But when our students are coming into the Institute, it's well, it's 1500, 1600 plus students. And so you really do have a large wealth of uh, students to tap into. And a lot of the students usually find that they, um, gravitate towards students in the same organizations as them, um, with the same courses as them. And you could definitely meet people just in general <laughs> who are in your residence hall or who happen to be you know, on campus or in lunch. Um, there's definitely a lot of students that are in your cohort. And that's usually the number that goes on uh, through the sophomore year, through the junior year and senior year with you. So it's really cool to have that summer term where it's just you guys because uh, you, everyone who's there is a junior with you. <laughs> so anyone you meet, you know that you guys have that shared commonality and you're really on the same path um, to going into the, to the semester way together. So it kind of is uh, nice to have those folks who you can reconnect with during the summer term. And as Frank was saying, it, it really is much more uh, intimate in the summer because you don't have everyone on campus. So uh, look forward to, you know, connecting with your cohort in that way um, during the summer term, but also all of your years of matriculating. 
So uh, we got another question uh, from Ethan about do are all students in the ARCH uh, program? Yes. So the ARCH is a requirement at Rensselaer. So with the ARCH requirement, uh, students will have their requirement after their sophomore year. So every student that matriculates through RPI is required to complete the summer term and a semester away um, in one of those really cool engagement ways that uh, Philip and Frank talked about. So whether that's in a co-op, internship, civic engagement, and um, research, um, you have the opportunity to complete those things. So yes, it is a requirement for all. And uh, Farah asked, uh, what does HAAS stand for? <laughs> so you'll find at RPI that we have a lot of acronyms and uh, HAAS stands for Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. So that's all of our students who are in majors um, such as, um, you know, impact studies. They could be in anything that is uh, like psychology. So all of our humanities and social sciences, that's one of our schools. We also have the School of Engineering. We also have the School of Science. We have the School of Architecture. We have the Lally School of Management as well. We also have ITWS, which is an extension of the School of Science in a way. Um, so we have all those different majors that you can be a part of. And yes, a lot of our students are you know, singular majors, but some are dual majors. You can take a major and take up a minor. There's a lot of different ways you can really fill out your, uh, you know, bachelor's degree that uh, of completion at RPI. And I know I talked a little bit about co-term, which is all of our students at RPI have the opportunity to apply for their master's degree and stay one extended year at RPI, so five years, to get the master's degree after completing the uh, the undergrad degree. So that's an opportunity for students as well. Um, we have physician scientist program. Uh, Rishi wants to know, are students required? Yes. So any student that is uh, in RPI has the ARCH requirement, but we do have some of the majors who have specific um, outcomes that students need to reach, especially if they're going into, uh, you know, medical school or if they're doing pre-med courses. Um, we do have some of those stipulations that are outlined for students. So I would say, Rithi, once you get into your major and you're able to discern uh, what your requirements are going to be, your department will tell you what you'll need to do to make sure all your requirements are fulfilled. Um, and then you can just definitely go about it that way. Okay, um, do we have any other additional questions? I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, yeah, I think I've got yeah. one here, Jade, uh, from Elidor. She'd like to know, does the CCPD prioritize helping junior year students find paid internships or are unpaid internships weighted equally? So, Eleanor, we, we help students find whatever opportunity they want to find. Um, what we don't do is, you know, we don't have a desk drawer where I open it up and say, okay, here, here is your opportunity. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, we don't do that. I, you know, students need to understand that this is their career and their journey, and we're here to help them with that, but they're the only ones who know exactly kind of what that looks like. So if a student's in a position where they wanna work for an unpaid nonprofit organization, uh, doing some type of civic engagement work, absolutely, we'll help them find that opportunity uh, and prepare for it so, so that they can be successful in it. Similarly, if a student wants to work on the New York Stock Exchange, um, you know, as a paid intern, sure, we'll figure out how to help connect them with the people to make that happen. Uh, so we weight every opportunity equally is how I would say that. Um, and I hope that answers your question. Um, I think, let's see, we had one other question, Jade, I'm looking for it. So what are some of the companies that RPI offers internships with. So again, we partner with companies across the globe. You will find RPI alums who have done amazing things uh, on this planet. And as a result, we have connections with people in nearly every country and on, on every continent. I mean, if you would like to work for IBM, the question is, do you want to work in South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland, or New York? You know, there, there are a lot of places that 
students go and, you know, I'd say 80% of them are opportunities that we have helped create and develop and sustained over time. And about 20% are new companies every semester that students want to work for and go to. A lot of those are startups, uh, mid-levels, um, and they're, again, across the globe. Um, let's see. I hope that answered your questions. Um, Jade, I don't see any others on here. Um, so I think we might be headed out of time as well, now that I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> So I yeah. think uh, with so, that, um, we will probably that that, sign yeah. off. Um, I'd like to, again, thank Frank uh, for taking some of his Saturday to, to share his experiences with you all and for all of you for, for joining. Um, and Jade, uh, my partner in crime when it comes to the Arch, uh, on behalf of her, I think we would... Uh, all like to thank you all for your time today and and listening to us. Please know that we are always excited to to talk with potential students. So feel free to email us or reach out to us and and let us know how we can help you. And with that, I think we'll close up and hope you have a wonderful Saturday. Thank you again for joining us.